All right, guys, I'm currently in New York City, walking, making my way to a location that has 13.5 thousand deaths. It is the most haunted location in New York City. These pictures show a patient who had an onset of smallpox on July 28, 1939, the day of arrival in New York from Portugal, where he had been in contact with malignant smallpox. Smallpox. It was a dreaded killer and disfigurer for more than 3,000 years in all parts of the world. Prior to the vaccine's discovery in 1796, more than 400,000 people a year died from smallpox in Europe alone. Worldwide vaccination efforts led to the disease's eradication in 1979. The highly contagious and deadly viral disease, once contracted, either killed the victim or left them with significant scarring, especially on the face, arms, and legs. Before the late 1800s, many cities built hospitals specifically for treating smallpox sufferers. In New York City, on the southern tip of Blackwell's Island, now Roosevelt Island, one such hospital opened on December 18, 1856, to keep infected patients isolated far away from the population. James Renwick Jr. designed the smallpox hospital, better known for Grace Church on Broadway, St. Patrick's Cathedral on Madison Avenue, and the Smithsonian Institute in D.C., Renwick's Gothic Revival-style hospital treated about 7,000 patients a year from 1856 until 1875. During that time, nearly 14,000 patients died in a structure designed for 100 beds. There are accounts that these bodies would be heaved into great piles, burned, and disposed of in the East River. In 1875, the building was renamed Riverside Hospital. In 1886, it was converted into a nurse's school and dormitory. The city smallpox hospital was moved to North Brothers Island. By the 1950s, Renwick Hospital had become useless and was abandoned by the city, quickly falling into disrepair, including becoming a drug den and being gutted by fire. With 14,000 deaths, such emotional, mental, physical, and spiritual torture, it's no surprise the smallpox hospital is considered the most haunted location in New York City. With limited time, I made the trek to the tram, crossed the river, and began the walk to these ruins just five days late of its opening anniversary. I've been walking for several minutes now. A little bit of a hike, but an absolutely gorgeous day to be checking this out. I think it'd be an amazing place to be at at night. I certainly could still get to it at night. Unfortunately, my time is not going to allow for that. So we'll have a less spooky investigation. But basically, I need to get somewhere down there. It's a little bit of a hike to be able to walk. But that's okay. Getting our steps in today. After exploring and setting up to investigate, I realized I had made a very rookie mistake. Recognize these life lessons and therefore learn from them, such as in the case of me coming out to this little strip of island 
and not having a screwdriver to open up my tri-fill meter to replace the 9 volt battery which I had because somehow the tri-fill meter got left on and then the SB7 spirit box I broke I brought plenty of AA batteries but it takes AAA so now I'm having to walk this island to find a little screwdriver and some AAA batteries coming prepared is a beautiful thing there are many challenges investigating such a structure being on the tip of an island it's quite windy with Manhattan just across the river, city noises were constant. The structure is a shell of its former self, and it's considered unstable. It's entirely fenced off. Breaching the fence is trespassing. Is there anyone here who wants to communicate with me? If you say anything loudly, it will come through this device. Does the lonely girl want to say anything? What's your story? Does anyone need help? Trying to conduct a spirit box session here affirmed the need to remove the antenna from the device. There's so much radio interference on the FM and AM bands, it's very difficult to discern if I was hearing any responses or just receiving radio chat. Did you work in However, hospital? one response is rather interesting. It appears to be my name. My name's Rick, what's yours? My suspicion is that there's more history, more stories, more here than meets the eye. I want to keep this unexplained cases file open. I want to return here with more equipment, more time, and unravel what mysteries this 164-year-old structure holds. For unexplained cases, I'm Rick Garner.